she's in and she's looking good. Welcome to German Auto Works, where in just five weeks, we took a stock M2 to this beast of a race car. We've got seven weeks to complete this project, so if you want to see how we took it from this to this, stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to German Auto Works, where today we're starting episode three, and it is day five of the build. Today, we're taking the car down to another workshop to install the roll cage. We're just in the workshop now, just putting the dash bar back in and, this, and the um, steering column. Uh, it's just going to allow us to move the car around a little bit easier to get on that bad boy trailer that drops down, which is pretty cool. But yeah. off down to the workshop now to, uh, to get this roll cage job started so we're not going to do it in the garage because we don't want it to be like messy a lot of welding obviously it's just put a nice floor in so we're taking it down to one of Kel's buddies where you know it's a bit of like a, a workshop for him to play with his cars um, and it's got ramps in it as well if we need to get it up on the ramp to get the under seal off it'd be easier for us it looks mm -hmm. sick on the trailer there, man. Okay, so we just turned up at uh, complete auto repair. This is where we're going to be doing the roll cage install. We've got Chris over here down from Colorado, which is super cool. He's coming to do uh, the welding for us. And uh, yeah, we're just going to roll the car off now into the workshop. We're in. We just started on making foot plates. So these are kind of like pre-made and then we got to cut them to the contours of the car. So we've got our marks already pre-made here. Um, we're just going ahead and cutting them out. So, pretty tight all. So that's the end of the first day um, of welding. It's been a really hard day because a lot of the time was taken up getting these uh, foot plates nice and dialed so we had to make up some templates um, actually getting the foot plates to contour to the body is is actually quite difficult but we've done a nice job there's, there's barely any gaps there and then we've actually got the main hoop in which is a big step in the right direction um, it has to be a really specific angle which we've nailed so I'm really happy about that and we've tied it in with some tacks now this has laid the foundation for pretty much the rest of the cage uh, the wrong angle here messes everything up so uh, tomorrow what we're going to be doing is getting these rear beams in uh, rear pipes and we'll end up basically making like a half cage then we'll pull it out and we've got our guy uh, Chris doing the TIG welding so we'll make it look really nice and then we'll move on to the rest of the cage so it doesn't look like much progress but these things take a long time and we want to make sure it's absolutely perfect uh, catch us again tomorrow <laughs> Yeah, 
next morning and we're now making some good progress on the roll cage. We're starting to get those rear stays in, literally being welded in as we speak. Then we'll start to get the diags in. Yesterday was hard because we were getting that lean on the uh, main hoop absolutely perfect and now everything's just falling into place lovely. Let's have a look. Essentially the half cage now made up and uh, we broke away the tack so that we can get it out of the car. Reason being is so Chris over here can hit it with some really nice welding. Um, much prefers doing it out of the car than in. Um, we've put these rebar in because I couldn't find anything else in Home Depot. Um, should be fine. It's literally just so that when these pipes are welded here, this uh, hoop doesn't tuck in. So it keeps it all nice and supported, triangulated, uh, so that when it gets welded, it doesn't change the positioning of where it lands in the car. So when we put it back in, it'll be in exactly the same space. That's the end of a really, really successful day. Um, Chris done an absolutely fantastic job with the welding. TIG welded, look how lovely that looks around there. Really, really nice stuff. It's really hard to do this in the car, so we actually took the half cage out so we could weld it on the bench. I think he's done a fantastic job. Tomorrow's job is gonna be putting this back in the car and making up the front of the cage, um, the pit props, getting everything nice and tied in, and this rebar off tidying that up tomorrow we don't need that anymore and yeah I just think Chris has just done a fantastic job and I'm uh, really excited to get this back in the car it's the next morning and we're styling this one out um, we're doing really well so far so I've got the diagram uh, we've got pretty much the the main hoop done um, Chris is currently working over there on the rear kind of half cage section. We're basically going to be getting all of that done and then putting it in the car. And the reason for it is so that he can do really sweet welds. So we're going to get the gussets in, we're going to get the crossbar, the diagonals all in before we actually put that back into the car. Once it's back into the car, we're working on the front section of the cage. So we're going to be putting these front bars in here, the windscreen bar and the diagonals. When we get there, we're almost done. We'll have to make our own custom door bars because we've got custom door cards that already have an inset for the uh, the door bars and we don't want to just randomly put them so they don't fit we, we want to make it really nice so here we are the, the rear section of the cage um, Chris has done an absolutely fantastic job with the welding uh, it's being TIG welded which is really nice this is the method of, uh, of, of welding and myself I'm not massively confident with the welder it's kind of a skill of its own so we've been leaving Chris to it um, and he's been doing a really good job, so we're really happy. Uh, this is T45, as mentioned before, so it's a really, really strong material, but it's also quite thin and lightweight. So this whole thing, you can just pick it up, no problem. If that was CDS, you'd need two people to actually lift it up. So uh, we're, we're going for function and also form with this build. So we're at the car now, and we're making some modifications to the actual body. Um, when we get the bar in here, the front bar is going to really follow close to this A pillar. Um, so the original dash bar mounting is here, and we've actually cut those off. These used to look like this, uh, and that's where it used to mount. So we've got rid of those so that we can bring that bar really close down there, and it makes everything look much nicer. Now that does pose a problem for our dash bar, so we're going to have to modify it, which is where these lovely templates all the way from the UK come from. Um, these will be cut out in mild steel and then we'll actually lop off the end of this dash bar and then re-weld our templates on uh, and then we'll, we'll fix the dash bar into the car a different way. Now there's two reasons, one so that you can actually fit this bar again and the other one is so that you can actually remove the dash bar. What a lot of people do is they weld the dash bar 
to the cage. Well, that's great, but if you've got a heater box in there, how are you ever gonna get it out? So we make it so that you can remove that dash bar. We can then service the heater box if we need it. We can put it back in uh, and it just it makes it much better that way. So that's how we do it. And uh, yeah, Joel's been doing well, doing the grinding, doing his thing, inspecting his work. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting to a really good stage with the cage now. You can see that the half cage is looking really nice, really starting to take shape. Um, we just want to talk a little bit about uh, the harness bars. So we've got this rear harness bar here, or you could use these front ones as harness bars. We wanted to make sure that they're absolutely level with each other. So we've used these um, digital angle gauges, and we know that this back bar is completely flat because when we had it in the car, we set it to a zero angle. So with that being said, we know that if we put these rear, uh, sorry, these front harness bars at the same level, then in the car, they'll look exactly the same. So we're not gonna have any skew whiff angles. It'll just be absolutely perfect. So we've just been down to Harbour Freight because we need to actually notch some of these tubes. They come pre-notched on one end, but for some of them, they're not notched on the other. Now, this is done purposely because when you're actually building a roll cage, the slightest differences in angles can change where a pipe will land. So Sean's left us how it should be notched, but not actually taking it off. And that allows us to not make uh, any mistakes uh, or it allows the pipe to be the right length. So what we've got to do is use this uh, little tool here, the tube notcher. Basically what happens is you, uh, you put the pipe in and you attach a drill to this part and then you set it to the angle that you need to notch. So imagine we were gonna notch that template there and then this spins and we just cut that. And that then cuts what's called the notch or the cope and it ends up something like that. And then you can have it fit on the pipes that it's going to really really nice so we'll end up something like this and it fits on there absolutely perfectly and then it's nice and easy to weld She's in, and she's looking good. We've got the half cage in the car. It looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with the way that everything fits. I mean, we're so nice and tight down the sides here. Gusset's looking great. It's lightweight being T45 and it's turning out really nice. So it may not look like it took long to actually make this, but it actually did. Um, the team have been really, really good. We've been putting in some late shifts to get this together. Obviously not really doing this before. We had to kind of learn on the job and um, we don't have much room for error because if we get it wrong, then they wouldn't have fitted and we'd have to make the pipe again. So Chris has done a fantastic job with the welding. It's a little bit out of his comfort zone, but he's absolutely smashed it. So uh, big thanks to him. And uh, Dalton's been really good as, at the shop here as well, making us feel really welcome. So big thanks to him as well. Next stage is, he's actually getting these front bars in now, these A-pillar bars. So they're looking nice at the moment. They kind of fit the contour of the car really nicely. Um, they land down here. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> they fit. Do you want me to stop? No, no. <laughs> they land down here really nice. Um, we've got to fit these boxes, uh, get them contoured and, and welded in. And then it's the big job, which is the door bars. We've brought the carbon door cards in that are now attached to the door. So we've got to get them made perfectly so they fit absolutely nice. Can't have any, uh, any misalignment. So these are the formed carbon door cards. Obviously at the moment they're all masked up. You might be able to see on the camera here where we actually have our galleries 
for the cage to sit into. So what we didn't want to do is just make the X bars anywhere and it could come here, come here. We need them to actually fit perfectly in here. Now that's actually really hard to do. So it's going to be a big task, but we're going to make sure it looks great. We'll have a bar along here, heading to the bottom, up here, and then along here. And then when the door shuts, it's going to house that pipe really nice. And once this uh, masking tape is off, you can have a little look here. It looks absolutely lovely. <laughs> Properly formed BMW Motorsport carbon fibre going on our build. Yes. My friend TK would tell me this, he'd be telling me about painting, and he'd get his fingers like this, and he'd go, yeah, yeah, that'd be nice, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this project has been absolutely great so far, but we couldn't have done it without the angels behind the scene. And this is one of them, this is Dalton from Speed Over Ground in Tempe. Without him, this, wouldn't have happened. He's let us use his workshop, he's been so accommodating, he's let us use all of his stuff, which is so good when you're literally in another country and you don't know where anything is. He's told us where things are. So, if you're in Tempe or in the Phoenix area, and this guy is so knowledgeable, he knows everything about everything, and you need cars, fabrication, performance work, hit this guy up, he's the best. Yes. We will see you guys soon. Yeah. <laughs> So we're into one of the hardest parts of this cage install right now. Um, we've bought carbon door cards, which we've mentioned before, that have inlays for, the, for these um, door bars. So it's quite important that we actually follow that curvature, otherwise it's gonna look rubbish, but that's really hard to do. However, we've managed to get the first bar in and it's looking really nice. So we can see that when this door shuts, that bar is following that line all the way down and these subsequent bars will do the same thing. This is the deepest inlay. So we started with that one first. That fits really nice. And then we'll have another bar coming from up here. Now, these bars are designed for uh, the BMW Motorsport car that these door cars were from. So they are, they are quite high up here, but that's for safety. Most cars you want it a little bit lower so it's easier to get in and out but for the maximum safety, you want the bar starting up here where we got our string. So yeah, it's looking good. Back down at speed over ground today. Um, unfortunately, Colorado Chris had to go home. So the cage is 95% done, but uh, we're gonna have to finish the rest of it off down at the paint shop, which is happening tomorrow. Um, before that happens though, we need to get the actual dash to fit the car and the dash bar to fit the car really, really nicely around these front bars. Now we want to do that before we put the pit props in because then you can actually get the fitment around the dashboard really nice. Get it fit in lovely before you actually make it harder to get that dashboard in. So the first thing we've got to do is install our plates. So we're going to be lopping off the end of this and then welding in these new plates. And those are designed to go on here, which will allow us to, with a bit of jiggery pokery, get the dash bar out later on, which is good. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get to it. It's gonna be a bit of fabrication work, not too hard. Um, probably be a bit of time lapse.
quite a uh, pressured moment really with dash. You only get one chance to cut it, so we have to be really precise and just cut off very, very small measurements uh, and, and kind of sneak up on where we need to be. Basically, I've got a hole cutter here which is the size of our pipe, and I know where the pipe lands roughly. So what we've got to do is notch the dash so that the pipe fits in there at the orientation of the roll bar that comes down the front. So I've got a little bit here that I need to actually take off and I do that with the flap wheel and I basically just do it by eye and really carefully just nip away at it till my bar, my uh, hole cutter, fits in there really nice. delicate as that really with a bit more we'll have that fitting lovely and snug in the car We're now leaving Speed Overground. It's been a great time here. We're heading over to the paint shop now where we're gonna have the door bars finished off by the fab guys that are there. Fortunately, as we said, Colorado Chris had to go home. Um, but then it will be painted in sunset orange. It's gonna look really good. Then we'll get it back into the main workshop to finish off our build. So if it takes the next week, what do you think in time frame? Uh, I'm trying to get this done by the end of the week. That's the goal, right? It is, but I mean if you need an extra day, yeah. they might not like to do that, but if you need an extra day to do it how you want to do it, that's fine. Yeah. We've, we've got um, delay space, so it's not a major rush. And when we say... This is the... Um, of the coat, nine degrees. I actually did that a bit more. I think it's more like 12. Um, this is the front stay to upper pit prop. It's just saying like there's a few measurements on here. But to be honest, this is just a guide, but really it's all just going to be done by eye. Right. And, and it fits where it fits. Yeah. Got the car off down at KG's Classics. These guys are doing some insane builds inside, which will be cool to show you later on. But for now, the guys are okay, They've, uh, they're going to tackle the, the extra bits that we need doing uh, and I'm really excited to see the paintwork as well after Kevin has dealt with it, uh, it's going to look sick. And check out this stuff as well, I mean this thing's got a Porsche engine in it, hydraulics, this is the kind of stuff they do. That's the end of this episode, we hope you guys have enjoyed it, it's been a really difficult week for us, uh, a little bit out of our comfort zone but we've managed it, the car is going to be coming back next week, lovely and painted. While it's away, we're going to be tackling this, the wiring loom. We're going to make sure that there's no unnecessary wires in the loom. Uh, it's going to be all taped up and fit lovely back in the car so that the car's going to work as it should, but not have any unnecessary wires hanging around. It's going to be great. Hope you catch us on the next episode. If you like this one, don't forget to leave a comment, like and subscribe.